Greetings brothers and sisters and friends. Um, just going to give a short video and some thoughts on the Covid-19 uh, virus, the coronavirus and share some observations and some instructions from the, the Word of God, the Holy Bible. Um, it's quite a um, troubling, worrying time for people. Uh, a lot of strain, a lot of burden on, on the government, on the NHS service and the frontline care staff, a lot of, a lot of uh, panic and uh, I've been closely over the last couple of months keeping my eye on the media attention on the coronavirus and the and a few things have um, just flagged up in my observations and being out and about around the town. Um, I was watching, I don't want to get into conspiracy theories, um, I, I'm not a coronavirus denier, I do believe there is a virus and that it's uh, killing people, uh, I don't know if it's a weaponised virus, I have no more knowledge on the subject than than your average Joe, but um, I'm very well aware that uh, diseases can be weaponised and it's come from China, nobody knows, do our government know, um, but um, knowing how the world works, how the principalities of evil in dark places that we wrestle against as Christians, how they uh, manifest themselves in the human race and the powers in the principalities in the world, not necessarily the lawful leading powers but the influence around surrounding all global power, money, influence and uh, all the forces of um, against all governments and uh, people, all the adversity in the world, all the temptation, all the um, injustice. Uh, so I um, don't want to get into conspiracy theories but um, you, you can't dismiss that there may be something out of hand, there may not. Uh, so in the overall picture and these are just considerations and uh, observations I, I'm not stating any facts I'm just sharing some observations um, watching a program anyone watch that program Silent Witness um, it's not something I watch regularly but I have seen it a few times and I think I was I wasn't watching it but I caught the end of um, it was a two-part episode, a uh, two-part mini-series, uh, two, ep two episodes to the story and it was on Port and Down, the uh, military, British military um, base where they um, test uh, biological and test anthrax and all, all different biological weapons and warfare that the MOD uh, tests. So it's just a an, a fictional story uh, regarding this scientist who invented a virus and uh, once they retired lost their funding something like that that they they stole the virus out of the lab and it somebody had a car crash and the vial broke and the uh, forensic investigators were killed by the virus and it contaminated the um, the forensic scientist who took contaminated parts back to the lab and subsequently died so there's a lot of deaths in this uh, this second episode I didn't see the first episode and I thought that's interesting and a bit insensitive considering this was during the out the first outbreak in China of the coronavirus and this episode coincided with exactly that time and if you I think you've, it's probably still on iPlayer if anybody's interested and in the second part, in the very end of the, the second end of the series, of the sec in, in the second episode, the um, they were investigating the um, people involved it, who worked at Port and Down at the time, and one of those people was I noticed Sergeant Corona, and I thought well, that that's that that's was that a coincidence? You know, it's too much of a coincidence, and I thought. Oh, that was the first thing that struck me as really odd to to see that on mainstream media. I know how uh, some of these um, 
devils uh, like to write things into scripts, you know, like the um, Tavistock Institute and the social engineers, how they like to put these little clues into uh, uh, media programs, you know, it's, it's, it's a wicked practice, but it's uh, like the, it's like computer games, they put easter eggs and things in it that, to people to find that associate, that have a hidden meaning, it's just a sick, um, egotistical way of like stating we know something you don't and we put it in a a, a gnostic in a gnosis kind of format in in a program in plain sight so it's suggestible but it, it's, it's unprovable it could be a complete coincidence i don't know i'm just stating what i saw and what you know the reality of evil people you know let's face it this world is evil um as evil people, we're all evil, we're all capable of evil, we're, we're all sinners, um, we've all fallen short of the glory of God and um, anyone who's not come to faith in Jesus Christ and been born again is of, of the devil and the devil can uh, sift people at will, he has influence in the world at will, here and there, ambiguously and there's components on the world stage that are more permanent permanently agents of Satan. So Satan has his claws and the mass to influence at will, to lead astray, to ferment and craft. Um, Satan's like a roaring lion to sift. Um, he's powerful, no one can overpower the devil. The only, the, the only people can overpower the devil are those who trust in he who overcome the devil, who's, who's God, which, which was Jesus Christ dying for all sins and uh, being holy and innocent and pure and resurrecting after um, going into the grave and coming up three days and uh, overcoming the world and sin and dying for sin that we could be redeemed and righteous by his, his grace through faith and that's the only way, he's the only way you can overcome the influence and power of this world. So with the coronavirus, noting these uh, influences in the media, I again caught a few other programs where I saw um, they were actually antique programs, and they were um, I saw the ad the old advertisement for the old Corona brand. Um, I think they used to sell lemonade and pop on on Unigate milk floats. Corona, they used to have lime juice and lemonade. And it was a brand, Corona. And I saw a big old Corona sign. I thought, oh, there's another Corona suggestion. And then I saw another uh, program, which was an American. And then there was another item discovered that was called Corona. The, the, the brand was Corona, but spelt with a K. So there's those observations on the media. Before th This is before the Europe outbreak. I thought, oh, that's a bit strange, you know, and a bit insensitive. I thought, well, surely the people who are regulating what's broadcasted on what day would have watched that, seen that, that that clip of the Sergeant Corona, and perhaps would have thought, oh, that's a bit insensitive at a time like this, and a bit suggestive, you know, so perhaps they would have taken it off air, but no. I thought that was um, very, just, just a strange anomaly. And then um, out shopping, I noticed uh, before the outbreaks in Europe, again while we're still in China, there was a shortage of sanitizers, out of stock, a whole lot. And uh, I thought, that's a bit odd, people are stocking up on that and nothing else. Then the following week, it was toilet roll, all the toilet rolls had gone. Now again, this is before the, um, like our current situation, I, I, I had to, I, had to go out today to try and get some food and uh, you know the shops are, are barely stocked um, they're, they're in co the government at the moment encourage allowing vulnerable people elderly people to have the first hour so they get priority food because of the um, so the panic buying that's been taking place now previous to any panic buying I noticed that there was um, no toilet rolls at all and they weren't being restocked and then on the, on the news the same evening the um, uh, 
they were saying that the manufacturers are, oh no, there's plenty of toilet roll, but people have been panic buying. Now, I didn't notice anyone panic buying toilet roll. It, to me, it looked like they hadn't stopped. They just simply hadn't stopped the shelves of toilet roll. Now, if you're panic buying toilet roll, why aren't, why wasn't all the food flying off the shelf, all the tin food? It was, there was no panic buying that I could see um, for about a two week period. The panic buying seemed to happen after the media said it, that everybody's panic buying and then then that created a panic and people went out to panic and stock up with food and that's where we find ourselves so I thought that's a bit strange it seems like the panic buying has been triggered by a fake panic buying to trigger a pa real panic and now we've got this uh, situation where elderly people are told to stay in and be you know keep themselves from contact are forced to go out into public areas and shop you know it, it, it seems everything the um, government have been advised to do is in our country seems to be fermenting the like the doctors crying out they haven't got masks they're not being tested so everything that's being done to encourage the spread of this disease is being done in the name of oh we, we're doing what we've been advised scientifically to do so I question the government's advisors or some of the advice that they've been given and then I'm thinking about what I know about the Jesuits how the Jesuits um, people like the Jesuits I'm not, I'm not saying the Jesuits are involved here I'm just saying as an example the Jesuits their main tool and weapon is infiltration they're, they're very if you read the um, study the the Jesuit oath they're very intelligent well illuminated educated men and uh, they study hard they're experts in their field and they don't wear a collar and a Jesuit written on them they are professional professors or scientists or they're in a disguise the Jesuits are masters of disguise and infiltration and being advisors to governments and kings that's their role in history um, they're always close to the power there's an influence and the way the Jesuit works they have a, an agent and he will be an advisor and he will go back to the main group get, um, relay all the intelligence and information he's gathered they'll have a conflab and they they will direct that agent how to steer and influence the powers that they are trying to infiltrate and influence now that 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 raised the question when when i see this uh, the fruits of our government i'm not i'm not against the government i think you know um i can commend them in certain ways for the way they've tackled things but um i kind of take the uh, sympathy on the government they're only in power for a short time they've got all this influence and you know the, the, if you think of the government it's the, it's a lawful body in action and it's a temporary position being in you know number 10 downing street you've only got a short window but these are lawful powers and they are i'm going to read from uh, romans uh, to give some instruction about the uh, the laws of the of, of the world but my view is um, trying to understand the evil in the world and the conspiracy in the world and and see how that's against the lawful government. It's not always the conspiracy doesn't always come from within the lawful body of who's in number 10. It's the evil influence around the lawful powers to undermine the government, to corrupt the government, to give the government a bad name. It's all, it's all what the, that's the game of the media to undermine the truth. You know, to spin, to um, create public opinion, to um, mimic and uh, get your own way. Um, <clears throat> But the government have have only got a short window to act, and the, and the law is there to to be used lawfully. And if they're they're acting unlawfully, well, there's not there's not really anything anybody can do about that. It's um, it's just the way the evil world is. And uh, but I'm going to read um, some scriptures. But uh, thinking of the uh, how the Jesuits influence and people um, infiltrate powers and inf and give duff influence because um, the government are relying on other sources of intelligence where they haven't got expertise in their own their own um, knowledge base so they have to trust other people 
So the, um, that is one way the government can be exploited and influenced. They can be handled, they can be managed, they can be deceived. They're human beings at the end of the day and uh, I think that's why it's important to pray for governments to, uh, you know, they need help, they need, they, they, need, they need some support. And whether you agree with the government or not, you still, uh, as a Christian, we've, we've got to honour the uh, lawful powers. It's, um, as I, I'll read this from the scriptures. So it's difficult for the government, you know, I do have some sympathy. And uh, if there is a conspiracy, I don't, I don't think it comes mainly from the government. There may be proponents in the government who are part of a conspiracy, but I, I don't think the... The whole government are the conspiracy. They're just people trying to do, you know, do their best. You know, in the short period of time, it's it's almost like an impossible, you know, um, impossible office to hold successfully because you're on a changing tide, you know, and the waves are crashing on the rocks and uh, storms build up. You, look, with this, we just got out of Brexit. Been. Um, you know, thank God that we're out of Europe and we're looking forward to the future. And then suddenly we're, we've got this coronavirus on us and the shops are um, empty. So it's uncertain times. Nobody um, nobody knows what's around the corner from one minute to the next. Uh, nobody, nobody truly sees everything all at once to know what's going on. We uh, see darkly. Um, we, I don't understand stand all the scriptures I don't I'm, I don't know all things I I'm, I'm just a student I'm just learning in life and learning the word of God and growing as a Christian and a, and a human being as a person as a soul so um, I think the wisdom in the scriptures is 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 certain it's a rock it's solid and uh, like um, I think it's in Acts where no Hebrews put uh, the elders have have a good report by faith. You know that's how we get a good report. We put things into practice when we first call on the Lord and believe, and we pr repent and we sincerely seek the Lord and He He answers. We we feel the joy and the, uh, the forgiveness and the grace and the peace of God and the joy that that born uh, brings brings forth in the believer's heart and life. And then you still need faith for the next step, and then faith is constant. You you, you have to continually apply uh, your faith, and and when you do, when you trust the word of God and you do it, you you're, you get a good report. You know it's true. Or when you're corrected, you know you're in the wrong, and and the scriptures straighten you out. You know that you've got a good report. You know your conscience has been, your opinion, you, your conscience has been pricked or you've changed your mind you've seen the error of your ways and the and the holy word will straighten you but if you have no faith in god or the holy word and you don't believe it it's not going to be effective you're you're going to become hardened in your conscience and you're going to um slip up you're going to lose lose faith you're going to um be be damned your progression is going to be hindered by your lack of faith and trusting in the word that, that's why we got so many that, that's why there's so much apostasy there's uh, people believe that what they want to believe or hear what they want to hear or see what they want to see in the scriptures and uh, it's very difficult to navigate if you're a believer and you but we we have the word of god to guide us it's um uh, second timothy it's a uh, the bible's for edification for instruction for correction and in, in all all matters of righteousness, forgive me for putting it in my own words, but uh, uh, the words for believers to as a, as a, um, to renew our minds, it's living water, it's um, a holy book, it's a living holy spiritual book, it's, um, it's, it's incredible, it's, um, it's of God, it's like the, the heart, mind and will of God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, it's, it's a complete book of instruction for daily living it, everything in in the world that you encounter it, the answers and the provision is all in the the living water in the holy word which was um, inspired by the holy spirit through the vessels that were chosen to pen the uh, biblical authorized canon so we have a faithful living testimony 
that um, sealed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ and the apostles, written, recorded, and then uh, lawfully exegeted and presented as a, as a King James Bible. You know, I thank God that I have. I love the Scriptures. I, it's a treasured possession, and my testimony and 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 the love I've been given from the Lord and Jesus Christ and God the Father, and and the blessings of of the Holy Spirit and, and, and studying his living word and to gain a good report through faith. Um, so in, in, in with this uh, coronavirus um, and the evil machinations potentially um, about foot, it, to me it seems like a bit stage managed. Now I, I don't know all the proponents, that's completely ambiguous behaviour by Satan. But I do know the whole world's under condemnation because of uh, unbelief and I know uh, a time, there'll be a time in the world where you know, we're in a time of mercy and a time of the Lord's mercy is outstretched but the whole world, it, God is angry with the wicked every day, the unbelieving and his wrath is hanging over every single man, woman and child who hasn't come to faith in Jesus Christ. But the, the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ is outstretched towards all men that they may come to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ, accept his sinless um, atonement, his uh, death, burial and resurrection on the cross, his victory over hell, sin and death and his promise and the free gift of eternal life that's the wonderful news of the gospel that that that, will, that gives so much hope that gives so much um, context in life that gives you the ability to reason and learn and grow and think for yourself and to not trust man's opinion man's wisdom or man's knowledge but to learn of god to learn of the nature of god the heart of god the mind of god and the will of god and come to that um understanding and to be uh, changed within, to be that new creature and grow as that new creature is just a wonderful, uh, um, wonderful, uh, unspeakable blessing. It's hard to articulate what that, what that means in a person, in a believer's life. But I've noticed that um, there's just a few things that are out of hand, So, but I don't want to uh, hark on that too much. But um, I notice it just all seem all smacks a bit um, dirty, dirty handedness. And uh, another thing is they like uh, the media and the powers, the evil powers, like to uh, recreate the World War Two spirit. You know, everyone comes together. And, I, and I'm thinking of the uh, media story of the Pope. You know, the um, the fakeness and the disingenuine disingenuineness of this man who claims to be a uh, uh, an apostle of, of light, of a minister of Christ, walking down to a pagan statue of Mary and praying f that was uh, resurrected um, and put up and commemorated after the plague had passed. And he's praying to Mary for the uh, plague. Now, my question is, well, you're probably the person, your institution and uh, your priesthood, your Jesuit priesthood are probably behind some of the machinations to do with this global um, virus, you know, is it a weaponized virus? And if the government are aware that it's a, a criminal weaponized virus, are they going to tell the public that? Because they, they might not want to create fear. Um, I, I don't know, you know, we're the last, last to um, hear anything and looking at our government record, it's usually a case of deniability. They deny any corruption, any foul play you know, the paedophile behaviour and the organised paedophilia, the, the human trafficking, the criminal activity, the underworld, it's all, it's just all denied, it's just overlooked, it seems to be overlooked and it's very hard to um, think, well, you know, we've got to be obedient to these powers, well, you don't have to agree with these powers, you just have to have to be wise and, and uh, follow the scriptures and uh, you know, be lawful because if you're if you if you break the law, then you've compromised yourself. Whether the powers are, whether the people in power are lawful or not, that they have the law to lawfully act. So if you're a lawbreaker, you've compromised yourself from 
from being a lawful citizen so the laws quite rightly will go after you because you're a, a criminal or you just you're rebellious or you, you you're lawless so um the scriptures are are, are wise um so I've had all these observations um you know, and um, questions, 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 and uh, um, just worry. You know, you know, the worrying times ahead. You know, how long the shelves going to be emptied? Is it? You know, all these supermarkets are privately owned. You know, they could be involved in a conspiracy to block the stopping of sales. You know, to create more of a fear. I, you know, I'm just considering. I'm not I'm not saying that's a fact. And they could they could be part of a conspiracy. Um, I tried to get online and buy some food, but but of course they they can use the excuse everyone's panic buying. Um, I tried several sites. They're booked up for four or five weeks in advance. If you want a booking slot, the uh, online site I usually uh, use uh, the, um, were down. They were closed down, and I found a link to get it on onto the the shop site and I started my shopping but halfway through I was cut off you know I logged on started my picking list I had items and then suddenly I went back to an item I've just brought and the whole oh sorry we're out of all of those we're out of all of those well a minute ago on on that page there was plenty and now you're saying that there's nothing left you know and I thought well that's a bit fake I've been chopped off my, I couldn't get in then I found a way around it and then I got kicked off and I thought well, that's a bit suspicious are they deliberately stopping people buying food to create more problems up the road it, it, it just all smacks of me of uh, what should be done is not being done and what should have been done hasn't been you know it, but that it's easy for me to say I'm not not in the government I'm not in power I don't you know I would hate to think what a mess I would make so um, it, it's just it's the way of the world and I'm grateful for the, the word of God and the scriptures to guide me through these uncertain times. So I'm just going to close with, I um, want to just share a few scriptures I've, I've been studying recently the, from Romans and uh, I, I was, um, stu I've, I've finished the study through Kings and First, Second Samuel and the book of Kings and seeing, uh, just learn it, just going over those scriptures again, and, and I think learning new things and a few things are like uh, struggling with. But um, the main theme throughout, since King David and the the right, the righteousness of his heart, and then the following apostasy from then on forward, and then the then the coming back of of the righteous kings but there but after David there's always seems to be a compromise they never really got rid of the idolatry completely there's always a compromise so there was a David is a very strong type of Christ the righteousness of Christ and then after that it's just it just get, goes out out of control and apostasy and pagan all the idol worship slips in the, just just like it is today in a modern sense and um, how that repeated itself and then it, I can't remember the name of the king um, he's I think it might be Hezekiah he he stepped it up and he was another right I think it was Hezekiah and he got rid of all the um, idol worship and brought uh, Israel back into fellowship with God but then it all went belly up after that so um, some very interesting types and shadows and patterns in the Old Testament scriptures that seem to be uh, repeating themselves in the in the Christian era, the age of, the age of grace, the the time of the Church of Laodicea. It's a very apostate time. It's a lot of confusion, a lot of um, misinformation, a lot of um, you know like intelligence sort of work and counterintelligence and it, to cause. Um, indifference and um, a cognitive dissociation um, you know uh, to people's minds they don't know who to trust they don't know who to look to source information to make up their minds or what who's telling the truth you can't rely on people um, I'm, I'm grateful for my testimony of the, I can go to the Lord and I can go to my Heavenly Father and say look I, I don't know this I'm, I'm ignorant I'm, 
help me learn this for myself and then I'd study it out and then and, and I'd learn and I'd grow. I'm grateful for that um, just balance how to measure and reason and test. I make mistakes, I make mistakes with scriptures um, but I'm, I'm a, hopefully I'm always open for correction and um, because I want to be faithful what's the point? What's the point of being saved if you if you're not, you you don't want to do what's right and do do the right thing to love your Lord like you've been loved to do the right thing. It's just very difficult. I'm a weak, sickly, um, fleshy Christian, and in some regard, but not in all regards. But I, I I do struggle with repeated weaknesses that I at times I get tired of re confessing. And um, but I know the Lord's ever merciful, and He's he, He's He's always answered my genuine needs, you know, not not my wants, but but when I've really needed help and I've asked, he's answered, he's delivered, he's come through. And even, even the next day I, I can panic and fret again, but there, he's there again for the um, to pray and ask for that help and he assists. So I'm grateful for my testimony and my good report through faith in Jesus Christ and, and King James Bible, the Word of God. So I'm just going to just close off with, um, I'm going to read a few chapters and I'll start with uh, Romans chapter 5. I'm just going to read straight through, I'm not going to expound on these scriptures, maybe a little, but um, I just wanted to quickly read some, some spiritual water and I'll just in, uh, encourage people to study this out and you know study all things out in your own time um, and measure all things because that's what that's how we grow we we learn you can't depend on people uh, people can make mistakes and uh, confuse you and trip you up and and then you can repeat that and trip other people up I, I know I've been guilty of it and I and as I say I, I want to be corrected I want to I want to stand and I want to be a witness for Christ in in my own in my own life, whatever that entails, whether that's greatly or or a little. I'm I'm just happy to know where I stand and and have these blessing experiences where I can share the gospel and have shared the gospel. I want want to carry on doing that. That's the only thing that really keeps me going in life. It's a uh, it's, it's a turbulent world and. Um, I think of Extinction Rebellion. They're all, uh, all, all people are, you know, are heart wrenched by the the lack of care for um, the way the world's being treated, the way animals are treated, the way the environment's being treated, and it all to me it all seems to be um, all put on the public shoulders. It's never the corporate powers and the greedy powers who are responsible for damaging the planet. It's all. It's all going to be put on the oppressed, you know, the oppressed already. It's going to be, we're going to be, show, the public will be shouldering the burden of all the environmental tax and all the uh, things that come into play. But if you consider the wrath of God um, in the times of Noah, uh, um, there's another thing I kind of um, repeat that I'm not really that uh, about in the film and the sons of God. Um, you know, it said stated as a fact that they um, had intercourse with the ch children of men. Like, you know, I, I'm not so sure about that verse um, about the days of Noah because I know the days of Noah were, were violent. So it's important to study and measure all things that um, Christians or ministers will share from the Word and measure it for yourself to test it for yourself and not to trust in solely in what people tell you and then repeat it as it's fact you need to know yourself and the um, studying the scriptures and the hermeneutics and measuring scripture with scripture before you can really delve into what something one verse particularly means and you can take it you can add so much onto it and that, that's kind of where I've tripped up on the Genesis 6 I'm not really sure if uh, fallen angels fornicated with um, with the son, daughters of men, you know, I, 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 to me, it's reading into the text a lot more than it actually states. But it, it's sure about the days of Noah. It's violent, violent times, wicked, violent, apostate times, and the Lord judged 
sin with a flood. No, um, with the end, he's going to judge it with fire and wrath, his wrath. And, this, and the believers in Christ have been delivered from the wrath to come, but that wrath to come is upon us. It's, it's approaching because in the last days there'll be pestilences, which is viruses and diseases and poverty and, you know, um, lack of food. So there is um, a rocky, turbulent time up ahead for the world and for the saints and for all, all people that live on the planet. But during the period of tribulation, just just speaking to these um, extinction rebellion people, that the the Lord is going to judge the world with His wrath. So He's going to burn, not perhaps not literally burn, but He's going to pour His outpouring of wrath. There's going to be uh, earthquakes, upheavals. The sea's going to be tossed beyond its bounds. There's going to be heavens, things come meteors, all things, the heavens ripping open. If you read the book of the seals in uh, Revelation, the unfolding of God's wrath is outpouring. Then the dominance of the wicked, the Antichrist, the, the, the violence on the earth. It's all a repeat pattern and it's uh, approaching. So if you're worried about the environment, well, it, well, it's a good thing to worry about. We should be, we're, we're supposed to be keepers of the environment, but you, what you want to consider, if you don't know the Lord, is your salvation. not not fixing the world or being a, you know, like the Lord said, you gain your whole world and lose your soul. You want to lose your life, gain your eternal salvation to be saved. And then you, you wouldn't be worried about gaining the whole world. The world, you, you, it's the Lord's, it's not you. And, 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 and you're an heir of the world. You're a, a, a joint owner, if you like. It's, it's, it's for everybody. The world is for the human race. We're all equal in a sense. We should be all equal, but I, you know, we live in an iniquitous world where there's injustice. So you've got greed, and you've got oppression, you've got poor, downtrodden people, and you've got the rich and people who have an easy ride. So um, there's turbulent times ahead, and if you're worried about the environment. And and, thing, and and the world, you, you want to worry about your, your eternal life, your salvation, where you're going to be when you die, because you're not going to be um, annihilated, you're not going to fall asleep, you're going to be conscious, and you're going to be, you're going to be aware in the grave, so you, if you die unsaved, you're going to be suffering in the grave, and, and you're not going to be knowing why until you're brought up to face your your maker and, ju and your judge, your judge when you die. So you'll be experiencing, as soon as you die, the torment and the agony and the suffering and the loss. But you're not, you, you'll, you'll be lost forever. There'll be no coming back. So um, it's okay caring for the environment, but chasing it off, to make it right as a cause is, um, uh, not going to be enough. It has to be founded on uh, Christ first. You, you, you can't save the, the whole world without saving people's souls first. The, the Lord changes people from inside out. He doesn't um, want an outward show of putting the world right because the world should have been kept right in the first place. It's always down to a few to, to care and do the right thing. But there'll always be that evil people in the world, that mass of people or that minority of people who will not let any good or lawful, just um, behaviour, temperate uh, equity um, allow on the stage. It will crush it because it wants to dominate, it wants to be lawless, it wants its own way, it wants to promote anything goes, it wants to promote immorality, it's a reprobate, it's a reprobate mind. It, it has no value of human life. It's um, without feeling. So you're kidding yourself if you think you're a person or an organisation that can fix the world. You can't fix the world. It's um, under probation. We're in a period of, sal of probation for the world's salvation, mankind's salvation, to come to repent towards God 
and come to faith in Jesus Christ to receive the forgiveness of their sins and the free gift of eternal life. So if that's you, I'd encourage you to just invite you to seek the Lord while it's today and to believe and then to know the living God and be saved and born again and not, not focus or worry your worries on vain things of the of the world because the world is going to run its course evil will run its course and Christ has already triumphed over all evil on the cross and evil is going to run its course and realise that and meet what Christ has already done on the cross he's, he's um, been victorious he's right he's righteous he's the only light the only way the only righteous holy God who um, entered into mortal life as a 100% man, but 100% the Son of God, the Word of God, and the Creator with God, in God, the God the Father, through, the, through His Word, created all things. So Jesus is God, the Creator, and He called the God the Father. And He died, He gave His life up to save sinful men, that none would perish. And that was the Gospel message, the... the, the uh, the wonderful glad tidings of the gospel of peace towards all men is to receive the forgiveness of sins and the free gift of eternal life. That's the joy. That's the realisation. But, but it has to be received. It has to be sought for and received and taken and accepted before it can be known, before it can be experienced. You have to have faith in the one who's faithful and true. If you don't have faith, you're not going to know, you're not going to see, you're not going to believe, and therefore you're going to remain lost. So that, I just wanted to give those thoughts for the um, people who think that, that you know we can make the world a better place, like uh, the, the fake Christian uh, church does, um, who, likes to sh who, who, who likes to appear holy and loving, but you, you never hear the warning sharing the gospel message. They're never in line with biblical teachings. They're, they, they've got their own mishmash of beliefs and they appear as righteous, holy people, but really they're just um, wet, wet. Some, of, some Christian organisations are just wet rags and they're in appearance of holiness, but they're, they're wolves, they are in bed thick with the world and evil powers and they don't care about people's souls there's an appearance of holiness but they're false christians they are fake and they um these are the sort of people that are threatened by your average born again christian who who believes in the word of god they will go after these people they will persecute these people they're not they're not true to the doctrine of um, the Word of God, that, that they go after some other gospel, some other they teach another gospel. You know, they got their own beliefs in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, so you have to be aware of what what Christianity portrays itself as. It's important to get to gain your own report through faith. So you've got this imitation um, deceiving the world and persecuting true born-again believers uh, the church does go up the ecumenical um, apostate uh, church movements if you speak out against them they will target you they will attack you uh, that's been my experience um, they don't like it they don't like being told they don't like to hear the message of uh, salvation and repentance and the, the their a niche of their own and if you don't fit their image which is the world's image you know the world will conform people to its own image if you know if you're a born again Christian you hang around with people in the world that you will be the, the, the devil will tempt you away from your your faith and standing and uh, your state and you will be turned into you, you can slip into that worldly image you can put on the flesh you can re-resurrect your old nature and grow in that you know and grow worse in that nature than you were before you were saved you you carry you can carry on feeding the flesh where you should have should be slayed have slayed the flesh and be putting on the holy spirit so um to anyone 
looking at Christianity in the world, you know, you don't look to the Pope or the Church of England or the Ecumenical, which is all churches together, let's all hold hands with evil, let's be loving. Yes, it's good to be loving, but you can't, um, love doesn't tolerate evil, it doesn't like evil, it doesn't like, li it won't accept liars, it won't accept corruption. So you can't mix what's holy with what's unholy and unjust. So um, a Christian is uh, separate from the world, passing through the world, not of the world, because it's been purchased by Jesus Christ. It's, it's God's, you're God's property, and you, you're a vessel of his Holy Spirit. And although you have a corrupt body and flesh, you, you've been given the grace to put on the holiness of Christ and grow in the Spirit and live for Christ, to be a servant of Christ, an ambassador for Christ, a light to the lost world. So um, Christianity is not, not to the world apparent because it's masked by the fakeness of the false church, the whore, the whore of Babylon, the ecumenical church movements who are in bed with the world and the world powers and they're more concerned like the Pope of saving the environment rather than the salvation of man and mankind's soul. So I'm just going to close with um, a reading from Romans chapter 5 just to hopefully give some comfort to why we have tribulation and um, perhaps um, any brother and sister or any person who's um, fearing what's up the road to uh, you know not not panic but to if you're not safe to just come to the lord seek the lord he's inviting people to come to him you know heavenly father the lord god is not scornful to people who approach him if you're honest and sincere, sincere about your sins he's approachable and he's merciful and he's tender and gentle he won't scorn you he's not like humans like we are and get angry we can get scornful we can get aggressive we can get ugly the Holy Spirit's gentle and loving, patient, and it will. The Lord will entreat you to exactly what you need. It will meet you where you are if you come humbly to the cross. Call upon the Lord in faith; He will answer your prayer. And if you're a believer, He will answer your prayer. He knows what what we need before we need it. He knows all things from beginning to end. And the Lord is um, gentle and patient, long-suffering. Um, you've got to be careful not to try his patience and push his long suffering but the Lord understands what our circumstances are like he knows we're human, he knows we're weak he knows we've got, we struggle with sin um, but he's always there to help us overcome these things he's, got, he's given us his grace to beat to have the victory over these, the world and sin you know, it's sin in our own life and to avoid the sins of the world so I want to just read um, Romans 5 to give some hope and perhaps in comfort and encouragement. Um, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand, and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. So really that's why I wanted to share this scripture because it, it, it's a time where it, it draws us near to God. Maybe we um, need drawing near to God or we need to pick ourselves up and draw ourselves near to God. But tribulation works for our good it, um, and it, um, it worketh patience within us. It helps us to be patient and more receptive to humble and more open to being obedient to God's will. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation work with patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, hoping that the hope we have received to come. So we're looking up for that, that faithful blessed hope, who's Jesus Christ, who's promised to come for his saints, and to, you know, put the world right at the end. Yeah, after the tribulation, after the saints have been rescued, Israel's been uh, restored, the nation of Israel being grafted back in through the tribulation period, the, 
the time of wrath, which is upon the, which is coming upon the whole world, seven years of tribulation, and then the, the extreme outpouring of God's anger and wrath for not believing in the Son and the, the, the delusion, the people being deceived by the the beast, the Antichrist, and the world's powers and system, and the influence that that power will have over the whole world. It will deceive the whole world and lead lead it astray into into a global mass of body like Satan. It's going to be a body of people. It's going to be an imitation of Jesus Christ. So there's going to be one head. It's going to be the Antichrist. And all, all the people are going to be connected and yoked to the body of a beast. You're going to be one organic body of one mind and one evil. And you're going to be deceived. And then that whole work, that's all going to be swept up against the nation of Israel who will be going through a fire for their salvation. And um, anyone who doesn't want to be part of that will have to um, take the guillotine or, or, or face execution because they don't want to be part of the one world conspiracy global body of mass that will come upon the world. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us, much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies we were recon re reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so sin passed upon all men, for that all have sinned, for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is a figure of him that was to come. But not as the offence, so also is the free gift. For if through the offence of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace which is by one man, Jesus Christ, have abounded unto many. And not, not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offences unto justification. For if by one man's offence death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offence of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be more made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offence might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign, grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So as I was re just um, reiterate that the whole world's under condemnation and like Jesus said we all need to by his righteousness all, he paid for all sin so by one man we have uh, the justification through faith in Jesus Christ that we may be saved from our sin through his righteousness that's the the promise and um, what's out, outstretched to the world and for all those who believe, they're not under uh, condemnation because they've passed from condemnation into the life of because the, they've received the life that's been given and offered. Who who Jesus wasn't a figure who just died and then disappeared. He he died on the cross, being sinless and holy, and and by the power of God, he took up his life 
and he intercedes in heaven today, now, because God's eternal and salvation is now, is today, and that time will pass and God's mercy will be withdrawn and then and God's wrath will be poured out on the wicked for not accepting what is on offer now, today, in your lifetime if you've not received the, 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 the gift of, of Jesus Christ, the free gift of eternal life, the forgiveness of sins and the peace and uh, relationship with, with God. Well, I'm going to read two more chapters and then I'm going to close. I'm going to read chapter 12 and chapter 13. And just as some thoughts to consider and then probably possibly finish on 1 Timothy. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And not be conformed to this world, but ye be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove which uh, may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ and every one members of one of another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Now I looked that word up. I'm not really sure what that means. I think it means without, um, you know, uh, not to be fake, a fake love like the uh, people in the Lord spoke of about people showing themselves to be outward appearance of righteousness, to fast in the street and paint their faces white. A bit like the Pope displaying his holiness, but hiding the gospel and the, the message of salvation behind his back and disguising himself as a, a an ambassador of Christ when in fact he's anti-Christ and lawless. He's a law unto himself and he, he sort of like believes he's justifying his own his own kingdom, the ki his kingdom, what he thinks the kingdom of God is to bring about the kingdom of God on earth. Well, Christ, only Christ can bring about the kingdom because he's the king and the, the, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven is is born within a believer's heart and when Christ comes back he will that kingdom will be with Christ when he comes and he will restore his kingdom to the earth it's not going to be built up by wicked men and religious people getting everyone to unite together to make a one world this is the antichrist this is the antichrist spirit working through the apostasy, the, the the corruption of the truth going astray, it's going to form its own idea of what it thinks the Bible teaches, where in fact if every student of the Bible can test that that's not, that's not true, that's wrong, that's an imitation, that's um, reprobate, that's not going in line with the Word of God. So we can all um, measure these things. Uh, let love be without dissimulation. Uh, adhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love, in honour preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Distributing to the necessity of saints given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. It's not always easy. 
some men just don't want to, you know, some people deny the truth, some people go out, out of their way to hurt you or, you know, won't let go of something or just look for a fight. Uh, it's not always possible to get on, you know, to, to, to like all men and to, you know, sh have all you, have your love received by all men. You know, some people hate people who are kind, good, and loving. You know, I'm, I don't, I don't wish evil on any person. You know, um, but there are people that see good and righteousness as a weakness because they're evil and hard. It's just, it's just the way uh, the world is. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him, if he thirst, give him drink, for in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but God. The powers that be are ordained of God. So this is important to consider about the world leaders and uh, the powers on the rule the earth, uh, the lawful powers, not the lawless. Uh, Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they, they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. So not supporting, not doing the right thing in the eyes of the Lord, not, not um, supporting uh, the government um, can... Uh, lead you astray and that will damn your progression in Christ that will stop you from growing developing and that, that that's really the last thing any of us need for rulers are not a terror to good works but to the evil wilt thou then be afraid of the power do that which is good and thou shalt have praise of the same for he is a minister of God to thee for good but if thou do that which is evil be afraid for he beareth not the sword in vain for he is the minister of God, a revenger, to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. So, you know, beware of um, how you behave, because you can evoke the wrath of the lawful powers, or somebody in the law who takes a dislike to you. Wherefore, you must need to be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For this cause, for... For this cause, pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their Jews, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear. I thought that was interesting. Fear, to, you know, we, perfect love casts out all fear, but we do fear. We fear the unknown, we fear, you can fear powers, but it's to put all those fears on the Lord and, and not fear, but to fear, it says, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honour to whom honour. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbour, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbour. Therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. And that now in the time, that now it, it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Praise God. Um, and amen to that. It is getting nearer and nearer. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armour of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering, wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provisions for the flesh to fulfil the lusts thereof. So there's, there's, there's a meat load of um, instructions to glean from the book of Romans so I wanted to just go over the how we should support the lawful powers and I'm, I'm going to close just in some instruction given by Paul and, and Timothy in you know, 1 Timothy chapter 2 
minister to you, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Saviour, who will have all men to be saved and come to, unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So I wanted to just read, give the word of God as simply as it is written to um, give instruction and edification and, and perhaps some comfort to perhaps anyone who's um, having a tough time or a bumpy ride. And just to consider that um, praying, you know, I'm going to be praying, I have been praying. I don't want to boast, but I'm just stating the truth. I, I can only boast in the grace that the Lord Jesus Christ has given me. I'm a, I'm a wretched man, I'm a vile sinner. Um, I don't practice those things, but um, I know what I've been saved from. I know what I am, what I'm capable of, and what all men are capable of. I don't kid myself. Um, I just want to consider the, the the powers what they're going through. So they do need prayers. They need uh, they need support. Now they may be deceived, but I, I really don't think they're the main proponents of the conspiracy. These are lawful powers, and they're they're, they're ordained of God to act lawfully. And if there's law breaking in 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 the law that and they got the power and they got the proof, they will go after it. They're a terror unto evil. You know, that's what the law's for. And that's why our government's been undermined by this spin and all these powers that try and corrupt governments. So you imagine you're a government, you get into power, what you're up against, what you've got to fight. And then you become what you're trying to fight if you may, if, if you go astray. So, you know, we're commanded to pray and supplicate ourselves to these powers. So I'm going to be praying for our government, our nation, our queen, and all the people that they hear the gospel, come to the knowledge, and hopefully that, you know, mercifully the Lord will deliver people. People will seek the Lord in these uncertain times. But people don't know what's coming up the road. We, the shops are being, we don't know what, say there is a conspiracy plan to cause problems, you know, that might not necessarily, that could be a foreign power in getting involved, that could be private powers uh, meddling in, corrupting the, the, what the lawful powers are trying to do to help people so um, it's an evil world and we live darkly the government can't see everything they're, they're reliant upon advisors so they really do need prayer they need you know they need that support so that's one thing I'm going to be doing praying that they make the right decisions so as a nation we can get through this um, because people are losing their lives, people are losing loved ones. And people are going to be left, and it's going to be the vulnerable and the oppressed. You know, the, If they're encouraging old people to stay in, and now they have to go out if they're desperate for food, they want to stay in and keep themselves in for a few weeks, and they've run out of food, they're being stopped from get, getting online to get it, and not all people were internet savvy, and a lot of old people don't like the internet, they don't agree with it. And you know, it's just it's just painted as red that you know that's the way it is, and everyone's got a lump here. Well, not everyone is agreeable to the modern technology. I know, lot, you know, most of my um, parents' generation and and uncle aunties and uncles, they're not really in. You know, they use it, but they're not really into it. And like the, the modern generations are nurtured on it, raised on it, and it becomes normal to people. You know, some people don't have access to the internet, so they're not going to be able to go out and get food. And you're asking these elderly, vulnerable people to go to shops that there's a a choke in the supply for whatever reason. To me, it's it, I, I honestly am observing that it's calculated that these things are being stage managed to cause problems for this. You know what? Everything that's done to prevent it is, is not being done, it seems. It's being encouraged to increase the spread of it. And, and it's all, you know, I'm not saying that's directly the government, but, but perhaps the influences that the government are following, they've got to follow advice. So, you know, I pray that it's 
dealt with correctly. Any corruption or any misadvice is not listened to, and they, they follow. They change their mind. They make. They go, look, we got it wrong. We get. It. We're, we're changed our mind. We're sorry. You know, that's all you can really hope for. So I'm going to be praying for the government and and people to seek. The, you know, hopefully the people will. You know, be broken by this when they were humbled, and they will seek the living God for answers, comfort, and salvation. And that's going to be my prayer and continual prayer. You know, um, people are, are suffering awfully, and uh, you know, it's, it, I suffered trauma all my life, and any trauma or event I see, it traumatizes me. I'm very empathetic, so I do. Um, sometimes I have to switch myself off. But, um, I am a worrier. I'm a, I fret. I worry, and I'm grateful for that rock and that anchor and my faith in Jesus Christ. And I, I, I want want to share that with the world. And um, I haven't been getting out sharing gospel tracts as much as I I would like to and I should do. And during this coronavirus, um, I, you know, um, I'm not really sure what I'm going to be doing. And my should I go out? You know, am I getting a? Am I going to get the virus? Have I got the virus? I've had um, cold symptoms. I haven't got a high temperature or a persistent cough, but you just never know. Uh, the knowledge uh, on the virus isn't complete. They're learning about this virus, and it's it's uh, the manifestation of its symptoms, and and it, and that can manifest differently in every individual. Um, so. Nobody knows what's up the road. Um, I don't know what what I'm going to take one day at a time and uh, continue in faith. And I'm just going to close there and w wish everybody and pray everybody is blessed. All the saints are blessed and uplifted. All the sisters are covered and and uh, full of the Holy Spirit. And any vulnerable brother and sister in the Lord is uh, um, upheld and. Uh, you know, bless greatly, and I pray for the weak, and I pray for those in the world to uh, seeking, um, seeking hope and comfort that they will receive the help they need, and they will receive proper care. People in hospital will get the, you know, the right things, but inevitably there's going to be a mess. I know the world can chew you up and wreck lives, and and it can all be oh well, you know, these things happen. So uh, there's going to be there's going to be heartache. It's going to be tragedy, and that's all on that's all on the government shoulders. That's all on their responsibility. So I'm going to be praying for our government. That they they they're sober in their judgments and they're God fearing, and um, I pray we get through this uncertain time, and the uh, the gospel will have free course. I'm sure it will, and I pray for my brothers who are out teaching and preaching the gospel they're blessed and upheld and delivered from you know violent people and persecution and hatred and they can deliver the message of salvation with with, uh, with joy and be lights to the world and that's what i'm going to seek to do in the future and continually and that's what i'm aiming to do um, with these online videos to reach out to lost people looking for salvation and i'm going to close there Wish everybody well and a blessing in the name of our beloved Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.